we want to share with you some findings from a documentation project that's been going on for about three years, specifically focusing on documenting violence and discrimination against lesbians, bisexual women, and transgender people. The people who are doing the research are just as much at risk of state and non-state violation as much as the people who are being interviewed. How do we do a human rights report where we want to hold the state accountable, where the very act of questioning the state's power gets you into trouble? As human beings, we all want to be accepted as who we are. My name is Azusa and I live in Japan. I represent the organization called Gay Japan News. Everyday life as a lesbian, bisexual women and transgender in Japan is often to cover. And cover who they are and cover who they love. We don't have any legislation that that specifically protect LBT. Current government that came back in power in the last general election is explicitly against protection of sexual minorities. They said protecting the rights of sexual minority people was not necessary. So my name is Tilaga and I'm from Malaysia. I work with this organization called CRIS. There are two sets of law that are, are practiced in Malaysia. So we have the civil law and we also have Sharia laws. The fact that we have uh, civil law and Sharia laws um, you know, it's, it also gives a certain sort of privilege for Malay, Muslim people, but it also has a lot of disadvantages. Under the Sharia laws, we have laws to criminalize same-sex uh, activities between women. What it creates is a lot of fear within the LGBT community. The state also funded, you know, corrective counseling for LGBT people. People like to hammer the fact uh, that, you know, homosexuality is a sin, it's against our religion, it's against this, blah, 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 blah. That creates a lot of fear within the community. My name is Jay and I work with the Women's Support Group, which is an organization based in Sri Lanka that works to protect and promote the rights of lesbians, bisexual women and trans people in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is one of the 73 countries globally which still criminalize same-sex relationships. Just looking different is a problem. So you get stared at every single day, every single day if you go to a public space. If you're cross-dressing, you could be again uh, arrested for misleading the public. Probably the worst part is being ignored about who we are. It's as if you do not exist. For us, it was more the emotional difficulties in terms of dealing with very difficult stories. I didn't expect um, for people to, even the transcribers actually, to get secondhand trauma. People would ask them, you know, who's paying you to do this research? Why are you doing this kind of thing? This is Western culture, homosexuality is Western. You always need to take that step back, you know, I'm an, I'm an activist first, you know, I'm a feminist first before I'm a researcher, right? So drawing that line was very difficult for me. I think there's a good sense of community like in, in Malaysia. I think one of the best things would be that um, the community also. The fact that we can come together even under this condition, under these circumstances is great. We are here and you know, we are queer and what about, you know, that's about it. So, which is I think nice, there's a strong sort of community sense which is good. It's, it's very simple, we just want our society to be safe for all people, including LBT.